If you are someone who is new to the concept of market research, you might be surprised at the frequency and the depth with which market research is often conducted around brands and companies to arrive at decisions. To give you a quick sense of what exactly I am talking about, let me give you a quick example of a harmless looking health or energy drink that you might have consumed from your neighborhood store and the kind of research that might have gone into the background prior to the launch of the product or its advertising. The first thing that might have been done is a deep dive into the category to understand what the competition is like, which are the different brands, at what price points, what are their market shares, how well are they performing uh, in terms of revenues, what are the different uh, ways in which they are marketing and selling themselves and any other information which might be useful to understand where exactly does competition stand. The next thing that might have been done would be to look at trends and innovations, not just from the region, but also globally, to try and see what is new and how the preferences amongst consumers are changing and what are the new innovations that are shaping up the drinks category overall. Before actually going ahead and making a product, the marketing teams might have made a lot of product concept test based on all this uh, learning that they have from the other research and uh, they would then test it with consumers where they would describe what the product is, what the price point is going to be like, and what is the benefit that they can expect from such a product and try and get a sense of what kind of product would work the best in that market. Then they would have probably come up with a lot of different names and designed a couple of uh, brand name or logo types and also given it a little bit of a look and feel and then they would have done a test with consumers to try and see what is the brand that resonates the best with these consumers. Once they have a better handle of what the brand could be like, they would probably move on to the next stage which is developing communication. Over here they might have done some inside generation work with consumers where they will go and deep dive into the lives of the real people and try to understand what exactly can they uh, tap into the insight that they can tap into to try and motivate these consumers to buy the product. And usually before creating a big budget television commercial or a very expensive video content, they might have uh, done copy testing wherein they create a storyboard and test that with a sample of consumers to try and see if they are understanding the message, if they are feeling motivated to buy the product, if they find the uh, message interesting or the execution interesting or not. And they might also have created a mock-up of a website or a uh, app if it exists and tried to understand what's the journey like and um, done some user testing to understand if the experience that they are trying to create for the brand is, uh, is being communicated properly through that journey or not. They might also have done some keyword research on Google Trends or uh, Google Keywords to try and see what is it that people look for when they are looking at drinks and uh, what are the different uh, keywords and uh, how expensive they are and uh, what is the competition for bidding on each of the keywords to try and arrive at their search uh, strategy. And the list can go on and on. This would probably give you a sense of the amount of research that might have happened in the background before you actually see a product. Having said that, not all brands do all the different kinds of research which I was just describing. It depends on the importance of certain decisions along the process and the amount of money and some of the other factors that determines how much research is conducted and to what extent and to what depth it is conducted. There are many times when we end up doing a lot of research ourselves, uh, like desk research or you know typing things on Google to try and find out uh, certain answers. And even though we might not actually call it research, but it is uh, market research or it is research in, in, in a way. This is my first video on market research and in this video I'll be explaining the concept a little more in detail. In my subsequent videos in this series, I will be going into the different techniques used for market research into a lot more detail. I will also be inviting a lot of experts from the industry who will talk about uh, the different areas in which they specialize in research. So let's get started with today's video. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. 
but with just a bit of help it can be a lot of fun on this channel i simplify real world marketing for all the curious minds out there hi i'm rahul and this is the business of marketing I had taken a short break from uh, releasing new videos as I was uh, busy upgrading my entire equipment and uh, I was also working on setting up my own business and uh, now I'm back. I quickly wanted to thank everyone who's been following my content and has subscribed to my channel. Thanks a lot. If you are new to this channel, uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, click on the bell icon so that you are always uh, updated whenever I post new content. and if you have any thoughts or comments please uh, leave them in the comment section below let's try and understand what exactly is market research by understanding why exactly do we need market research when we want to find the evidence that helps in making decisions on important questions that affect the business or the marketing or the brand or other specializations within the company uh, market research comes into play by conducting market research in a proper way you can reduce personal biases and guesswork that goes into a lot of decisions that we might be taking it also helps with understanding the trends the opportunities the gaps and the challenges that exist in the market which might have been missed otherwise it helps guide and make the decision making process a little more scientific and reasonable and fact based as opposed to uh, being based on guesswork and uh, before uh, huge investments are made it is important to be able to take the right kind of decisions and uh, it would be best if those decisions are based on facts or data and by doing all of this it actually helps reduce the chances of failure although it cannot be eliminated but uh, it does Uh, make a difference when it comes to reducing the rate of failure there are mainly two types of research the first one is called primary research in the case of primary research the information is sourced first hand by doing research yourself or commissioning a research partner some examples could be when you interview consumers yourself or create a survey to find answers When you are conducting primary research you have full control over the entire process from start to finish based on the kind of answers that you are looking for you can design the research in a specific way you can design the questions you can uh, look for specific answers and while you are conducting the research you can tweak it slightly or modify it to try and get closer to the kind of answers that you are looking for in the case of secondary research you do not conduct the research yourself but you try and find the answers from existing research which might be conducted and published by someone else examples of this could be published reports newspaper or magazine articles that you read up to try and get a better sense of what exactly is going on you might feel that you have little control in the case of secondary research but what usually happens is that in some cases secondary research is a very good cheap and cheerful way of finding answers to the kind of questions that you might have or some hypothesis that you might already have in other kind of situations secondary research can often become very expensive you might come across a research a uh, report which costs you thousands of dollars and that might not be feasible for you so you have to find other ways in which you can find answers it all depends on how important an answer is for your brand or for your business uh, with a little bit of experience it will become pretty obvious to you as to what kind of questions require you to spend a lot of money on doing primary research and what are the different kinds of questions or scenarios wherein you can do a little bit of secondary research and uh, still manage to take a reasonably good decision there are broadly two kinds of research approaches that are used to find answers the first approach is a qualitative approach here you try to find anecdotal evidence or observational evidence by asking others or deducing your answers based on what people say or do uh examples of this could be interviewing real consumers or it could be going for shop alongs with real consumers where you observe how they are moving along the aisles what are they looking at what are they picking up and how do they evaluate the different products that exist in the category the second approach is a quantitative approach and in this approach you try to find statistically representative and significant data which is then analyzed further 
to find answers to your questions. So when you conduct a survey or when you look at consumer panel data, which is based on thousands of consumers across a market, it is quantitative research. Quantitative research becomes extremely important when large sums of money is riding on the back of certain decisions that uh, marketers or uh, business leaders have to make. As a marketer, you would not want to target your product to a wrong segment, which is actually not interested in buying your product. Or, uh, or a segment which is probably not large enough to help you meet your annual uh, targets. You also wouldn't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, getting a celebrity and then shooting a full video using the celebrity if that video is not able to convince your consumers to buy your product. And this is where quantitative research becomes very critical because you are taking a statistically representative and significant sample uh, to arrive at your decisions. And if you have been following closely, you would have probably guessed by now that there are largely two kinds of intentions behind conducting market research. The first scenario is a exploratory scenario where you are not really sure about what the answer is, but you are using research and the various answers that come out in your questioning to try and arrive at a, a solution. It is, it is a process which uses a lot of open-ended questions and you look for possibilities that could help you nail the solution. It is usually done at the early stage of the decision-making process. And examples of doing exploratory research include interviews or you know talking to a, a group of people in a focus group discussion. The other kind of scenario which typically exists is where you are looking for a very specific answer to a question. Specific research techniques are used to determine the most suitable answer amongst a few possible answers or a hypothesis that you already have. The intention is to prove or disprove a hypothesis that you have or to decide on the best choice from a bunch of options that already exist. Examples of this form of research can be A-B testing or even concept testing. If you're a small business who's not interested in investing in a full-scale primary research or hiring a research agency, you might be wondering what are the different options that you have. The first thing I would do is some secondary research online to try and get a general sense of the lay of the land, of the category of the market forces, what is going on, what is the news story saying, and things like that. Next, if I could find a couple of experts in that area of uh, business, I would try and see if there is any way in which I can have a conversation with them and uh, try and understand from their experience what exactly is going on and what are the opportunities or the gaps that exist. Having done that, I would definitely speak to a bunch of people that I know myself and uh, through them and through their connections, I would try and find out more people who are potentially going to be the people interested in my business and try and get a better sense of what is it that they like, what are they like, and uh, find ways in which I can connect my brand or my business to them. The next thing I would do is either physically visit to understand or virtually track my competitors to try and understand how they behave, what are their strategies like, and therefore use that to develop my own strategy. And lastly, a lot of the research techniques are the ones which I would use myself, but I would probably not hire an agency for it. I would try and do them myself with the limited amount of data or the limited amount of money that I have. In the case of most of the big organizations, they usually tend to have an in-house research team. A lot of times it's called the CI or the Consumer Insights Team. And this team is responsible for finding the best research methods and the best research partners to be able to find the decisions that you are looking to make. They supervise the entire process while working very closely with other departments within the organization. And that brings me to the end of today's video. In this video, I wanted to give you a very quick summary or a top line understanding about market research. In my subsequent videos on this series, I will be deep diving into the different techniques of market research. I also plan to invite a lot of uh, experts from the industry. These are people who are known for uh, different specializations within market research, and we will try and learn from their experience the different techniques that they have been using and get, uh, get to see a lot of examples also. I hope you found today's content useful, and if you did, please hit the like button. And if you have any thoughts or comments you want to share, drop them in the comment section below. 
And before I leave, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you should subscribe now. There's a lot of good content coming up. And thank you for watching Business of Marketing. I'll see you in my next video soon.